I moved to KD Plasma because it was supposed to be the better option for gamers. But after I've installed GNOME 45 for a review, I discovered something interesting. Playing Apex Legends felt more responsive than on Plasma. But how can that be? GNOME doesn't support variable refresh rate, has issues on Wayland which makes the game feel like it's running on the lower refresh rate and doesn't offer tearing yet. Was it all just placebo or is there actually something else going on? In today's video we are going to find out the truth on which Wayland desktop environment is better suited for gaming. Figuring out how to best measure input latency and especially end-to-end -end latency was not an easy task. I personally don't own any of those fancy light sensor devices that I could hook up to my mouse and monitor to measure their latency, so I needed to come up with something else. Luckily a video made by the YouTube channel Optimum gave me the idea to use my shotgun microphone as a trigger, which compared to measuring wired should not make any difference whatsoever. But there was one problem, how do I match this sound with my video feed? See my Sony A5100 can only record up to 60fps, which means that the measuring results could be off by at least 16.67 milliseconds. To put this into perspective, the median of the human reaction time seems to be around 270 milliseconds, while some can even manage to go as low as 150. A 16.67 milliseconds latency would mean that we are at least 6.172% inaccurate, which I don't really like, especially since it's most likely double as high if we consider frame timings as well. So what I settled for was to just use the audio test to find out if there are any additional latency problems between the desktop environments themselves, while recording a shooting test in Apex Legends and CS2. In order to measure the actual end-to-end -end latency between mouse and my monitor, I used my smartphone, which is able to record at 240 FPS and even up to 480 if online sources are to be trusted. I did measure the 240 FPS recordings by speeding them up 8 times, and they are in fact 240 FPS, which gives us an inaccuracy of only 4.167 milliseconds, though the limiting factor is most likely my 144Hz monitor now. Here's how the tests were conducted. I first sampled through all my recordings to find audio or video clips that turned out to be as close to each other as possible, since clicking my mouse isn't 100% reliable all the time. Then I took those clips and counted each frame in DaVinci Resolve, which I then entered into a calc sheet. The consistent mark was the bullet indicator animation. What I measured were three different scenarios. KD Plasma with its default compositor settings that force smoothest animations, KD Plasma with balanced latency settings, and of course, Mutter. Before we take a look at the results however, I quickly want to mention that my measurements don't actually represent a proper end-to-end -end latency analysis, since even with the synced frames, there is no real way to tell when the mouse button actually has been pressed. My results only represent the difference between KD Plasma and GNOME and not their actual latencies. Anyway, here are the results. From the 240 FPS visual test, out of 30 bullets fired for each game, I managed to only sample 6 proper results in Apex Legends and 5 in CS2, which are again as consistent as possible. From the frames counted, I measured a latency difference of around 1.23 milliseconds between KWIN and GNOME on its smoothest compositor settings, while the balanced setting seems to lag behind by 2 it seems. This is most likely a measurement error, as it's still within bounds, and even if not, it shouldn't be noticeable anyway. Similar results were achieved by the system latency audio test, however GNOME tends to have a video or audio delay since we are only barely within margin at 120 FPS. That becomes especially apparent if we take a look at the 480 FPS test, which was a real nightmare to take, let me tell you that much. Like honestly, the phone only records a small portion in slow motion for a limited time, which makes it incredibly hard to hit the exact timing. This only led to a few identical results, but it shows why recording in a much higher frame rate leads to a much more interesting result. Overall measured latency is much higher, but this is most likely caused by my finger movement on my mouse, since I have a lot more frames that show the start of the movement. So what do these results tell us? It was all placebo. Or was it? Well, while Placebo is incredibly powerful and can easily fool even the most experienced players, when comparing KD Plasma to GNOME there is another major factor that plays into this. 
the way how GNOME handles missed frames. You know that feature that KD Plasma has implemented but GNOME doesn't? Tearing support on Wayland. In a nutshell, tearing is caused by the GPU sending more frames to the monitor than it can show, sometimes leading it to display two images at the same time. But this is not the only cause. Sometimes, even with a matched frame rate, synchronization issues can have a bad impact. GNOME, and especially the Wayland Display Protocol, were working around that issue by utilizing VSync, which essentially buffers a fully rendered image in the GPU and sends it to the monitor at a synchronized rate. However, these images can remain in the GPU's buffer for quite some time, leading to input lag. In more recent years, this approach has mostly been replaced by a process called Direct Scanout, which instead of storing frames within a buffer, sends it directly to the monitor. But wait, why does this not cause tearing then? Well, this is where KDE Plasma and GNOME differ. Like mentioned earlier, on Wayland the frames used to get delayed until the next refresh cycle, which led to the typical Wayland forces vSync topic. Now, with direct scanout, if a frame misses its window to get displayed, it will get dropped. The tearing protocol ignores this and still sends the frame to the monitor, leading to tearing but with a slightly better latency depending on how much of the new frame gets displayed and noticed by you. GNOME, however, doesn't have this implemented yet, leading to frames just being dropped, even though it already has gotten a lot better. When I thought that GNOME was feeling more responsive than KD Plasma, I think what I felt was those slight errors in frame timing. It's the same when you switch your mouse to a lower DPI and suddenly think that it feels more lighter or more accurate. The introduced pixel skips that can be noticeable depending on your resolution and refresh rate can trick you into thinking something that doesn't make any scientific sense at all. So the thing is that between GNOME and KDE Plasma, the end-to-end -end latency is practically identical if the game is running above your monitor's refresh rate. Below that, however, especially for more taxing games, variable refresh rate introduces a whole new discussion. And that's where Plasma gets ahead of GNOME. But for competitive games, it shouldn't matter at all. Now, to be clear, when I say stutters on GNOME, I blow this way out of proportion, since the actual experience is not bad at all. In comparison, it is definitely noticeable if you know what to look out for. Otherwise, you won't even feel it. And hey, variable refresh rate support is well on its way, so who knows, maybe we can say goodbye to these remaining stutters soon enough. If you found this video interesting, then please make sure to show it with a like and if you want to see more videos just like this one, then you should also consider subscribing to the channel as well. Thanks for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.